I'd like to welcome you all to CPP's live webinar, Putting It in Action, Developing a Balanced Organizational Culture. My name is Leah Walling, and I'm CPP's Director of Marketing Communications and Product Marketing for the FIRO suite of products. I'll be moderating today's webinar, and we'll be introducing our featured speaker in just a moment. Here at CPP, our only job is to help you be a better people development professional, and in turn, help every employee or client you serve flourish. And while we're best known for the Myers-Briggs Personality Assessment, CBP is also a group of people who can offer you the information, guidance, and support you need, including solutions for team building, leadership and coaching, conflict management, career development, selection, and retention. In our February 10th webinar, Be Better at Coaching Transformational Leaders with the Myers-Briggs Tool, Dr. Stan Trusky presented how to become a transformational leader with an integrated model that encompasses the Myers-Briggs tool. He also showed how to maximize performance by coaching others to follow this model. So in today's follow-up webinar, Sherry Haney, Organizational Development Consultant for CPP, will be presenting 10 actionable tips for both the MBTI and FIROB assessments that you can use in your leadership coaching sessions. So we have more than 400 people registered for our uh, webinar today, which is very exciting. And there are a lot of new faces out there. So I'd like to just do a quick walkthrough of the webinar format so everyone's familiar with the logistics. So today's webinar will run for approximately one hour. And the last 15 minutes we'll reserve for a Q&A. So during the presentation, as you think of questions, please go ahead and submit them to me using the question function in the GoToWebinars controls. And as with all of our webinars, today's is being recorded, and we'll be sending out a link to the recording in just a few days, as well as a copy of the presentation slides. So now I'd like to introduce our speaker. I'm very excited to welcome Sherry Haney with CPP. Sherry Haney is Organizational Development Consultant for CPP and is also Certification Trainer for CPP's MBTI Certification Program. Sherry works with businesses of all sizes, including the Fortune 500, to transform work groups such as IT, manufacturing, finance, senior leadership teams, and customer service into high-performing teams solving real-time business challenges. She provides analysis, development, and facilitation of organizational initiatives such as leadership coaching, strategic planning, performance management, and team building interventions. Sherry specializes in the automobile, airline, and education industries, and has also consulted for General Motors, Ford Motor Company, Delta Airlines, and Wayne State University. So please join me now in welcoming Sherry, and I'd like to turn over the webinar to her. Welcome, Sherry. Thank you, Leah, and thank you to all who are joining us today. I look forward to sharing my insight about the MBTI Step 2 Assessment and FIRO B Assessment results and how they can be leveraged as coaching tools throughout the process of developing a balanced organizational culture. As presented in the Coaching Transformational Leaders webinar, research shows us that organizational culture plays a major role in performance, growth, and success of an organization. Through the lens of PIPE, we have positive elements that, when integrated in an optimally balanced manner, results in a high-performance organization. You see the four preferences of the MBTI. The SF, at their best, promote cooperation. They encourage people to work together. The STs, at their best, promote consistency through established rules and systems. They are efficient and effective. The NFs, at their best, are a source of inspiration, support the organization's values, and help others develop. The this is Leah, the moderator. I wanted to jump in. Sherry, I think we might have lost your audio for a moment. Okay. Oh. How, okay. How is this? Perfect. Sounds like you're right back. Thanks so much. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. The NPs at their best focus on achievement and motivate others to high performance. Leaders need to develop a keen sense of self-awareness, enabling them to leverage their natural preferences and appreciate the necessity of exhibiting behaviors in the other areas. An effective leader will learn to step outside his or her natural comfort zone and demonstrate behaviors optimal for the present situation or seek others to balance the needs of the situation. The goal is to develop a common language among leaders in organizations, whereby each leader recognizes their own strengths and blind spots through the same lens as others. This is one of the reasons the MBTI has become so popular in organizations. 
it provides a common language for understanding yourself and others. While each preference has strengths, talents, and great contributions for the organization, research and evidence shows us where there is an unbalance in an organization's culture, it results in underperformance. With an overly focused leader's culture preference, there are risks of shaping an unbalanced culture. For example, overemphasis on cooperation can lead to management by committee, no clear direction, and lack of accountability. Overemphasis on inspiration can lead to soft performance and lack of discipline and clarity. Overemphasis on achievement can lead to indifference in a cold environment. While overemphasis on consistency can lead to a controlling and autocratic culture. Leaders who lead from their preference only at the exclusion of other behaviors will not be optimally effective. To achieve this balance, as coaches, identify the leader's culture preference through the MBTI and find out what they are missing. What are their blind spots? Identify the other positive elements that are necessary for balance and suggest behaviors to adopt and integrate into their habits. For example, an SF with a preference for cooperation might need to focus on standards and accountability to balance the desire for cooperation. To coach leaders, here are several specific steps you should follow. Discuss the coaching approach, the steps, timelines, what are the expectations? Are there any confidentiality issues to be concerned with? Then conduct your assessment, the MBTI, the FIRO B, a 360. Share, explain, and discuss the culture model. It's valid, practical, useful, and show the evidence that it works. Provide feedback. Then give the leader time to study and reflect. Collaborate on a personal development plan. Then coach according to the goals, objectives, and actions that are outlined in the plan. So one of the first steps in helping leaders to determine how to affect change in their organization is to help them assess where they are now and where they'd like to go. A fundamental step in that process is to assess themselves as leaders. What are they bringing to the organization? What are their own blind spots? And how can they best leverage their own strengths to move the organization forward? The best place to start is to use personality assessments such as the MBTI that are designed to help a leader get to know themselves quickly and to identify key insights for action planning. So we'll start with the MBTI Step 2 Overview. This assessment is a powerful tool that can be used at any level within an organization to help individuals understand themselves and others, and is often used to assist organizations with developing strategies for improving individual and group performance. While providing individuals with information on their four-letter type can be extremely useful and perhaps preferable in certain situations, we're going to focus our discussion today on the MBTI Step 2, also known as Form Q. This form assessment has additional information that it provides. It really allows you to help leaders identify core strengths and possible avenues to develop to achieve a well-balanced leadership approach. Even leaders who know and have verified their Step 1 type often experience aha moments when reviewing their Step 2 results. This form identifies individuality within type. There are 144 items. 51 are in addition to the Form M item. There are 20 facets, five for each of the four sets of dichotomies. The Step 2 assessment enables you to help your clients clarify and determine their best fit type, gain a better sense of the distinctive ways that they experience and express their four-letter MBTI personality type helps them to resist stereotyping by revealing some of the many variations possible within each type preference. Enables a greater trust in MBTI, which results in an improved sense of how to take appropriate action to achieve desired results. As a leadership coaching tool, the Step 2 assessment can be used specifically to coach leaders to identify and develop skills work through conflicts and improve communication, help them to make better decisions and enhance their learning, understand and adapt to differing environments, 
and facilitate change, their own and that of others. So when you use the Step 2 tool and this report, you will find that it provides a great deal of information. Make sure to spend the requisite time planning in advance for your interpretation session with these two thoughts in mind. First, through your interpretation, you will work with your leader to verify or re-verify, as the case may be, his or her four-letter type. Second, you are helping your leader create an understanding of him or herself as a basic framework for constructing a longer-term action or development plan. So it is important to take the time during your interpretation session to ensure that your leader understands and has time to process and reflect upon the information provided. Keep in mind, a step two interpretation usually takes twice as long as a step one interpretation. So let's get started with our 10 action steps. The first step in the interpretation process is to prepare ahead of time. Review the leader's report before your session. Check the basics, including the step one preference clarity index and the step two polarity index. Make note of any dichotomy with multiple out-of-preference or mid-zone scores. This information will help guide you as you move through your interpretation. When you review the step one types and preference clarity indexes, note which ones are in the slight preference clarity category. During the interpretation session, pay attention to whether the leader seems to have difficulty choosing his or her preference, especially on a dichotomy with a PCI in the slight category which would be less than or equal to five. Note the interesting features on the profile, such as many out-of-preference characteristics or mid-zone scores on a dichotomy. These are more likely to occur on step one preferences with a low PCI. View the polarity index. If it's 45 or lower, it could be a red flag to explore. One of the most important coaching tips is to ensure the proper mindset during administration. The number one reason for a low polarity index is the lack of proper mind setting during administration. If an individual believes he or she should answer the questions in a way that reveals behaviors exhibited solely at work or due to pressures of others, true natural preferences may not be revealed. To identify natural preferences, set the proper mindset by explaining as you answer the questions Think of what you prefer when you do not have outside pressures to behave in a particular way. If you could spend your time as you choose. What do you prefer outside of the roles you play at work? In other words, you may not be exhibiting your natural personality preferences at work, so please answer the questions with a mindset of how you would prefer to interact versus expected behaviors. So the second step is to meet with the leader to interpret results and begin by reviewing the goals for the session and the reasons for taking the assessment. As a coach, explore with your client what he or she hopes to gain from MBTI assessment insight. Ask probing questions about the use of the MBTI in the organization in the past and how he or she hopes to benefit. These questions will help set expectations, identify development opportunities, and set the stage for incorporating the leader's development into cultural transformation. You should ask your client, what were your reactions to the assessment? This question will identify if the proper mindset was in place when answering the questions, if there are any misconceptions about the MBTI, and whether or not the leader has a bias against personality assessment. The third step. You should introduce or review basic step one information using the first section of the step two interpretive report as your guide. If your leader is new to type, you must first interpret step one results, define the dichotomies, and as you describe each, have the leader self-assess his or her preference. Provide assurance that answers are neither right nor wrong, and explain the concept of preferences. They are innate preferences, not learned skills. Preference does not measure an amount, rather it sorts into a category. After self-selection and viewing results, the leader should identify a best fit type. As a coaching tip, ask, does this fit you? Does this type fit you? This question can include what aspects of your four-letter type description does or does not describe you well. This information will be useful as you progress to the facets 
Remember, your leader will have a chance to revisit his choices for best fit type after you've reviewed the facet results of step two together. So the fourth step is to explain the step two approach and use the section of the report titled Your Step Two Facet Results to help the leader learn about the facet. Point out the five facets in each dichotomy and their poles under each preference name. The scores on the facets do not equal the scores on the preferences. Make sure to discuss the interpretation system, in preference, out of preference, and mid-zone results. It is important to emphasize that the five facets do not comp comprise all there is to know about each dichotomy. Personality type is rich and deep. These are the research validated facets that have been most clearly identified. The fifth step is to describe how to read step two facet results and use the how to read your step two facet results as your guide. As you review the interpretation system with your leader, Remember the following so you can use the information to guide your discussion with the leader. First, there are environmental influences on type expression. Depending on your culture, educational background, your parents' influence, your work demands, etc., all impact your, how you express your type. Secondly, make sure you define out of preference. They are facet results that fall on the side opposite your step one result out-of-preference results are best explained as representing a compromise between a person's natural type and the demands of the environment. They are developmentally natural, meaning it may be the result of learned behaviors due to environmental demands. Also explain that all preferences are necessary for effective functioning. An important tip to remember, a person who is out-of-preference on a FAFSA likely expresses the favored FAFSA poll differently than someone who favors that same poll and they are in preference. For example, our sample report here, Jack, he is an enthusiastic introvert. Enthusiastic introverts are usually more selective than enthusiastic extroverts in what they get excited about in both work and personal settings. As you coach Jack, Ask about the demands of his environment that may have led to his enthusiastic expression. You may want to explore examples of how he expresses his enthusiasm at work and for what type of projects he might express that enthusiasm. By understanding the nature and the meaning of out-of-preference results, you can greatly enhance your leader's awareness of their own and others' individuality and help them identify more ways to use their unique expression productively. Step six is to briefly explain each of the 20 facets and the leader's specific facet results. Give a general overview of the facets per dichotomy and encourage your leader to verify or disagree with the results. Remember, one of your goals is to verify type or to re-verify type. Questioning while reviewing will help your leader to verify the report results as you explore them together. A coaching tip for a leader with mid-zone and out-of-preference results, you might say, it looks like you use both thinking and feeling parts of yourself. If this seems to fit, let's look at how it might appear. When you see mid-zone and out-of-preference results, take the opportunity to learn more about your leader and to gather clues to inform development or flex planning. Here we see that Jack has mid-zone and out-of-preference scores on the T and F dichotomy. Interestingly, accepting is one of the most common out-of-preference facet polls for ISTJs. This occurs in about 23% of ISTJs. This might be something to explore further in terms of his overall style. As an accepting thinking type, he may be seen as open and fair, but may confuse people who wonder what he really thinks. This might be an area for discussion. Your goal for interpreting mid-zone scores is to help your leader understand one side is innate or natural, and the other is an expression of learned behavior due to environmental demands. It is okay to express equal comfort with the skill level of each side, but one, based on our type theory, is your natural preference, and the other is derived from the environment. Action step seven, the leader will verify or re-verify his best fit type. 
If your leader agrees with the facet result, you may need to probe further and or provide additional information. To help leaders learn more about facet information, consider companion resources, such as the leader booklet, understanding your MBTI Step 2 results. You can also use the whole type description from your Step 1 results section. A helpful tip is to use the leader's questions as a springboard for discussion and consider asking questions like, is there evidence that this facet behavior was learned as opposed to being natural? Or do you need more time to reflect on type and facet information and to observe yourself in action? Keep in mind that your goal is to provide the framework for understanding, and it may not happen in one session. In fact, homework might be involved. You might ask your leader to identify which combinations of facet results are particularly interesting or puzzling, and then ask them to jot down thoughts about what these might mean and to perhaps even discuss them with others. It may be that your leader needs some time to reflect and then reconnect with you before verifying type. The next step is to summarize the leader's step two type, identifying out of preference facets. Remember, if he or she does not have out of preference characteristics, they may have an environment that fully supports their natural preferences. This does not mean the leader has not gained experience using other facets or is unable to flex to the other side. It means most likely he has been able to function with their first choice or innate preferences more often. The step two interpretive report is rich with applications, communication, decision making, change management, and conflict management. As a coach, introduce applications that are most relevant to the leader and discuss ways that she might be able to use application tips to enhance functioning and then agree to next steps for action planning. The information included in these sections offer suggestions on how to leverage facet knowledge to make improvements in those areas. Keep in mind, the step two facets provide excellent starting points for discussing specific behaviors and identifying those which may be problematic if overused. For example, if concrete is one of your facets, you may get stuck on some aspects of change and ignore others. As a coach, make suggestions for development, such as you could seek out someone from another area in your organization or from another industry entirely to gain fresh perspective. This would be a great way to step outside of your concrete comfort zone. And our last action step, number 10. Summarize the results by linking them back to the purpose of your session and reiterating the fact that neither step one nor step two results explain all aspects of personality. This is important to emphasize in order to avoid stereotyping language within BTI descriptions. Any type is capable of exhibiting inappropriate behaviors, and all types should avoid using their preferences as an excuse to dismiss poor behavior or to not learn to flex outside their comfort zone. The circle in this section that you see is a description of type dynamics, your dominant, auxiliary, tertiary, and inferior functions. The step two report utilizes this rich information without the dynamics terminology for ease of interpretation. For example, extra extroverts use their favorite process in the outer world of people and things, and for balance, use their second favorite in the inner world of ideas. As a coaching tip, suggest ways the leader might achieve balance by flexing to use the less preferred facets. For example, take breaks more often when involved in activities that require you to use your feeling and intuition. Calling on these aspects of yourself too frequently may cause fatigue. So this concludes our MBTI Step 2 tip. We are now going to move into action steps for the FIRO B. Based on responses, to both FIRO B and MBTI instruments, the leadership report using the FIRO B and MBTI helps clients explore and expand their understanding of the leadership style they use in organizations and how others might perceive and react to it. Both instruments pack into key aspects of personality and behavior such as communication, problem solving, decision making, and interpersonal relations. Together, they complement each other and provide rich information 
that is useful for personal ongoing leadership development coaching. Many leading organizations strive to maximize team performance and leadership effectiveness. Have used the Pyro B. It is the fundamental interpersonal relations orientation behavior instrument. It was developed to examine interpersonal needs and how needs affect behaviors. The Pyro B measures these needs in three areas, inclusion, control, and affection. It describes how individuals behave, how they affect others, and how they can be more effective. It identifies communication dynamics that affect leadership and success with teams. It allows quick gathering of critical insights to help leaders and managers understand their natural style. The Cyro B is an excellent tool for leadership coaching. It reveals individual needs and new behavioral options, allowing for flexing of one's leadership style to promote an optimally balanced culture. It increases self-awareness and uncovers the impact leaders have on others. It will identify leadership styles and allow leaders to see how they can unlock greater performance in their people and organizations. The FIRO B aids leaders in recognizing sources of and solutions to stagnation in communication and conflict. It highlights unique contributions of the individual, which lead to greater appreciation. Through this appreciation, leaders can work towards achieving a balanced culture. The interpersonal needs of the team members will be manifested in the organizational setting, particularly those of leaders. Therefore, to have insight and understanding of the impact on the climate will result in generating new options and strategies to reduce the barriers affecting team cohesion, productivity, and ultimately cultural balance. So let's take a look at the FIRO B model. This instrument essentially does two things. First, it estimates the level of behavior people feel comfortable with regarding inclusion, control, and affection. Secondly, these dimensions are divided into two components, express which are the behavior the person feels most comfortable in exhibiting toward others. And wanted, these are behaviors the person wants to receive from others. For inclusion, this need indicates how much you generally include other people in your life and how much attention, contact, and recognition you want from others. Control, this need indicates how much authority and responsibility you want and how much you want others to lead direct, or provide structure for you. Affection. This need indicates how approachable and friendly you are with others and how warm and congenial you want others to be with you. The expressed and wanted are the two dimensions. Express indicates how much you prefer to initiate the behavior. It is about what you actually do and may be easily observed by others. The wanted dimension indicates how much you prefer others to initiate the behavior towards you. It is about what you really want from others, whether or not you show it openly. So let's start with step one. As a leadership coaching tool, the FIRO B helps leaders understand what they might need first from another person in order to be invested in the relationship. Use the leader's FIRO B results, determine specific needs, then strategize how to manage those needs based on the situation at hand. The FIRO B can answer many questions about your relationship. For example, you can ask a question such as, how important is it for you to be in the driver's seat during decision making? This question can be understood by exploring your control scores. Another type of question, when engaged in relationships with others, will you be likely to take the initiative in developing a relationship and direct the course that your relationship takes. Another step is to explore the leader's orientation using the facets of leadership style and your leadership approach section. This will help the leader learn the true meaning behind characterizations such as aloofness, loyalty, leader isolation, and leader overexposure. Your leadership approach will help answer questions such as what do you contribute? What do you enjoy? How do you promote or encourage? As a tip, coach the leader. Help her learn to read the situation and identify behaviors most appropriate to exhibit. Leveraging your natural preferences may be suitable 
although flexing your style could provide advantages depending on your audience. Step three describes the interpretation process to review overall needs, expressed versus wanted, and the total need scores for inclusion, control, and affection. Remember that expressed behavior is active action toward others, and wanted behavior is passive acceptance of actions from others. For example, if your expressed is higher, leader-oriented to take actions first. They want to get involved and then see how others react. If your wanted is higher, leaders depend on others, let others act first, and depend on others to initiate to see what bubbles up before giving directions or setting limits. Questions to ask about express needs. How much time and energy are you likely to spend relating to coworkers versus working independently on your own project? Are you likely to be seen as a team player or an individual contributor? Wanted needs describe behaviors you want others to initiate toward you. When wanted needs are unfulfilled, this becomes an opportunity to contemplate your role and why those needs may not be understood by others. For example, are you comfortable with how much influence you have on the team? Do teammates provide encouragement and support during difficult times if you need it? As a tip, ask, is this working for you in your current role? How can you flex your behaviors? A fourth step is to work with a leader to identify any inconsistencies in what she might be expressing to others and what she wants in return. When our leaders are able to recognize the inconsistencies between what they want and from what they are asking for and what they are putting out for others to perceive, the light bulb will inevitably go off and opportunity for growth begins. An important tip to remember is to ask the leader, consider the reaction of others to your behaviors. Based on your needs, do you exhibit behaviors that are consistent with your needs? For example, with inclusion, if your highest need is inclusion, ask yourself if there are times when you feel left out of the loop or your feelings may be hurt or feel frustrated. Do you know who needs to be included in projects to cover all of your bases? For step five, the leadership report includes a section which role you take on in the organization. Are you a clarifier, someone who ensures that everyone has a voice? Are you a director? you want to be in charge, or are you an encourager? You exhibit emotional support. This role is identified by your highest express score. These roles are natural leadership behaviors needed at different times. How does your preferred role match the current leadership situation? What are the pros and cons of spending too much time in one area? A coaching tip would be to ask the leader, when would flexing to another style be beneficial. Action step number six, you should explore with the leader how interactions with others affect his or her leadership and discuss what is shown first in a leadership role. Your interaction approach provides insight into your visibility as a leader and the first impressions you make. It is possible your client may not even be aware of what she's putting out to others and the insight derived from this conversation could prove to be very valuable in her interpersonal relationship. Ask if any of the scores provided were surprising and why. If she can name a score that surprised her, talk more about how she could more effectively either demonstrate her need for this behavior from others or accept it when it is directed toward her. If your client's level of collaboration with others is visible in terms of recognition, what are the accomplishments? If your client is having a difficult time moving up, for example, what are the performance gaps that might be showing up as a frustrated want or need in the profile? As a coaching tip, ask the leader, how do these results influence how you shape your organization's culture? For example, if the first impression is consistent with the leader's strategy, which would be the strongest interpersonal needs, then you are more likely to be effective. For step seven, another excellent section in the leadership report describes how you work with others. Explore with the leader how he works with groups and other leaders, including working in a team, and the expectations of other leaders. 
as a coaching tip, ask the leader, can too much interaction lead to overexposure and overdisclosure? You may lose privacy and generate excessive commitments due to your accessibility. Or on the other hand, too little interaction can lead to reliance on others or substitutes such as email, written communication, and measurement systems only. Or there may be issues of low visibility and depersonalization. Ask what are the strengths of your leadership interaction and where can the leader seek balance? Action step eight focuses on power and organizational culture. Explore the leader's basis of power and influence, as well as her influence on organizational culture. Your type of influence is derived from your strongest interpersonal need. Socialized power is based on inclusion. It is useful to help others have an impact. Formal power is based on control. It is useful for fulfilling important objectives. And affiliative power is based on affection. It enables you to nurture, coach, and support others so personal and organizational values are fulfilled. A coaching tip for exploring power and culture, help the leader understand influence that was successful in a previous culture may not be successful now. What traditions should you stop? What traditions should you continue? Action step nine, dealing with stress and change, is one of the application sections of the leadership report. Through this section, identify the leader's stress triggers and discuss how he can leverage strengths and natural resources effectively. While your natural style has strengths, if used exclusively, can lose its effectiveness and open up areas that are challenging. As you coach the leader, help him keep in mind that his stress triggers and coaching mechanisms may be different than others. What are some potential differences? How can he alter his behaviors to address the needs that are unique for those that he is leading? And finally, action step 10. Help your client create a developmental action plan. Work together to develop an action plan for the leader that is tied to business and performance outcomes. The MBTI and FIRA B results provide suggestions within the action plan section to help you get started. Look at your client's results and have a conversation about what he perceives in terms of the level of effectiveness of his behavior. Help your client identify behaviors to start and stop or continue to improve his interpersonal style with others. My final coaching tip for you is to ask the leader, what type development steps for behavioral changes can you make to foster an optimally balanced organizational culture? This completes our tips and recommendations for leveraging the MBTI Step 2 and FIRB results for leadership coaching. As quoted here, leaders need to transform themselves if they are going to have any hope of transforming the performance of their organization. They need to first decide upon a common language for self-awareness. We can coach leaders through this kind of development using tools such as the MBTI and Cyro B to help leaders flex into different leadership styles and behaviors to transform themselves individually and together to transform the performance of their organization. This path of transformative leadership leads to an optimally balanced organizational culture. I'm now going to pass back to Leah. Thank you so much, Sherry. So Sherry has just provided a lot of information on how to use these two reports. And she also included her own personal tips drawn from her coaching experiences. Um, however, we also have a few more resources uh, you guys might want to check out. Uh, there is the MBTI Step 2 User's Guide. This is written by uh, Naomi Quink and Jean Kumaro. It is a, uh, a new MBTI Step 2 resource that offers practical insights into administering and interpreting the MBTI Form Q, uh, also known as the Step 2. It uh, has 128 pages um, that provides useful facts, new perspectives on personality type, and the Step 2 approach, and also detailed practical advice that will enhance your work with clients. And uh, the 10 tips that were presented in this webinar for MBTI Step 2 were drawn from this guide. Um, it, it's a, a, a very uh, rich, robust guide for practitioners.
There's also the Coach's Guide to the Leadership Report using the FIROB and MBTI instruments. So this is a guide just for coaches. It's written by uh, FIROB and FIRO business expert Eugene Schnell. It's a brief guide that provides all the background information needed to present the leadership report to the client. It includes summary points about the FIROB instrument and MBTI type theory. Um, it includes tips on interpreting and presenting the results. It has a complete section-by-section -section explanation of the logic underlying the report, um, potential problems and mistakes uh, one might encounter in interpretation, and then also tips on when to emphasize a particular section of the report. And then also, um, we are uh, there will be another webinar uh, coming up on April 26th that will discuss uh, the correlation and interplay of conflict and stress. So this is, you know, as part of CPP's 2011 webinar series, which features webinars on organizational development, thought leadership, and then a follow-up putting it in action webinar. Um, the next one is scheduled again for uh, April 26th. And our expert speakers will be Ralph Kilman. He's co-author of the Thomas Kilman Conflict Mode Instrument Assessment, and then CPP Organizational Development Consultant and Licensed Clinical Psychologist, Sarita Bakuni. So you can le learn more about all three of these re resources on our website at www.cpp.com. And then as a special thank you to everyone attending our webinars, we're offering a 10% discount on these four resources here. Um, you can order on our website at cpp.com. You can also call our customer service um, line, which we'll show at the end of the presentation. Um, the offer is good and through, through April 20th. You'll just want to make sure to use or reference the promotion code ACTION11 uh, to get that 10% discount. So now we'd like to go ahead and move on to our Q&A and begin answering your questions. We, uh, we have a lot of questions that come in, uh, that have come in, and I'd like to start with um, Sherry. So um, if you're, this question has come in from Sharon. If you're starting out with a coaching relationship, uh, you know, which of these instruments would you use first and, 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 and when? Well, if you have to choose one, I would start with the MBTI because it is more widely known. And it would be what I consider a foundational tool to help identify what is that common language. And if you start with that framework, the common language of how we as leaders communicate, how we make decisions, that will give you the basis for identifying what our natural preferences are, where are our comfort zones, where do we feel comfortable, and then identify what blind spots we have. By starting with the MBTI, you are grounded with your natural abilities which enables you to easily move into and step out of the comfort zone once you've identified that starting point. I would then move to the FIRO B as part of the coaching process. And one of the ways I like to explain the differences and why one does not substitute for the other, I think of the MBTI as, as more of the framework and the FIRO B as more of the canvas. You can experience Viro B, interpersonal relationship differences, and it can change from time to time. So you might be working on a particular team as a leader and have interpersonal needs that could be different from a year from now. And those Viro B results could change. So it is calling out behaviors that you could see differences down the road. So that's why I like to start with the MBTI, grab that framework, and then build onto the framework with the FIRO B canvas that could change. But together, they provide multiple lenses which give a more vivid picture of the overall leader style. Excellent. Great. Thank you, Sherry. So Robert has a question. Um, he says, he uses the MBTI step one. What's the best way to get started with the step two? Well, if you are already using the step one and you know that you will have the appropriate amount of time to interpret step two, I would actually begin by administering step two rather than step one. That will enable you to go ahead and gather the data that's derived from the 144 questions. You can actually 
move right into generating a step two report. We recommend the interpretive report. What that sets you up to do is get the information up front and then start with that basic step one interpretation. And one thing that would be considered a pitfall, some people move too quickly into describing the step two facet results. They're very excited about this rich information that the step two can provide and sometimes can gloss over the significance of allowing a person to identify as you walk through a step one interpretation, provide a description of the preferences, allow them to self-select, and try to come to a best fit type before you move into the step two facet. Because it is richer, it is more difficult to interpret, and you need a little bit more time. Uh, we recommend twice the amount of time. So if you know ahead of time that you can carve out that amount of time to interpret step two, you could start there. Just begin by interpreting step one. If you need to phase it in, you can interpret step one as you normally do, and then bring the person back for another session and move into the facet description and begin showing the uniqueness of their four-letter preference by showing these different expressions of type. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Thanks so much, Sherry. So um, Judy has a question. So she's she's interested. Should should we expect FIRO B results to differ over time, and are these results more environmentally influenced, or, or are they more innate, like the MBTI? Well, that's a, a great follow up question to to the first question that we had. Again, the the MBTI we consider that the framework if the administration is handled appropriately. And as I mentioned in the first tip, if someone answers the question with the mindset that they want to derive their natural preferences, what preferences are innate? And we're actually getting at that solid information up front. Then what the FIRO B can actually present are behavioral expressions. So to answer your question, yes. Over time, if you find yourself in a very different team environment, if you are leading people differently, it can generate scores that are different over time. And it does focus on behaviors, whereas the MBTI is deriving or getting at your natural hardwired preferences. So absolutely, that can change over time. OK, great. Um, so the um, there was another part to the question on um, getting started with step two. Uh, excuse me, I, I I actually wanted to do a little bit of follow up on that question on step two. So sure. um, another important piece to getting started on step two is to consider the certification program. So a lot of people may um, be administering uh, the MBTI because they're uh, they're educationally eligible, and I wanted to just make everyone aware that the new MBTI certification program includes a component on MBTI Step 2. Um, that's a recent update in the last um, year, uh, I believe in the last year, and um, so that's a wonderful way to, to brush up on um, or learn, learn new skills on the Step 2. Um, those are available through CPP. Uh, American Management Association and CAPT. And then in addition to that, CAPT also has um, just a dedicated step two workshop available. So um, that's the Center for the Applications of Psychological Type if you wanted to um, learn more about um, administering and interpreting the step two. And then of course, the step two user's guide is again a great resource for um, really understanding how to use the step two. So I, I just wanted to add those, those couple of pieces there. So, uh, Sherry, we've got uh, a question that's come in from Sharon. Um, do you have any tips for assisting a leader who is, this, this pertains to the MBTI, so do you have any tips for assisting a leader who's still having difficulty verifying his or her type? Yes, and I will, I will give you a personal example. Someone who attended a certification program that I was delivering a couple of months ago. As a participant in the program, through the verification process, 
ended up ultimately verifying three letters differently, which is quite unique, that it typically does not happen. And it was a wonderful experience for the other certification participants. They were actually able to see live this person talking through and sharing why he was having difficulty. And what happened is this person from childhood all the way through college, work environment, all of his environmental influences had been contrary to his natural preferences. So he had developed behaviors throughout his entire life and had become very successful and quite skilled in behaviors opposite his natural preference. So what was happening as he answered the questions, even though he had the proper mindset, he was still confused between the difference of what is the natural preference and what skills have I actually learned and how can I tell the difference if I'm successful and it appears that I can perform both naturally well. So discussions around stress and job satisfaction are a great way to help a person verify their type. And it won't happen typically in one setting if they're really struggling with understanding. Have them talk to friends and family. Ask probing questions such as, at the end of the day, even though you felt that you accomplished your goals and were very successful, how did you feel? What sort of stress did this present in your life? And job satisfaction, do you think about changing careers? Have you ever been at the point where you would like to try new things? Or you feel that there's just something there that you haven't been able to explore about yourself? Ask questions about what they enjoy doing in their free time. Or if they didn't have to work, and I'll sometimes ask this question with someone who's really struggling. If you won the lottery and you didn't have to work, what kinds of things would you enjoy doing? And over time, these kinds of probing questions can often help someone understand that while they are skilled and can be very successful with behaviors they've developed through their environment, that they can learn to identify what their natural preferences are. I hope that was helpful, Sharon. Perfect, perfect. Okay, great. Um, so uh, we have another question in from Dave. How can step two be used in a group? Step two is a wonderful team building tool. If you are working with leaders, it is it's wonderful to make sure that they're completely on board with the team building experience, that there are no biases that are going to be presented. For example, if a leader's type is considered the correct type, then that would really sabotage a team building experience. So first off, make sure the leaders are on board and that they are there to support and leverage the experiences with step two. It's great for a team that has many with the same type. And often you find that in particular industries, people gravitate to what they enjoy naturally. So you often see a group that has many of the same type. And the step two allows you to see what are the unique individualities within a particular type. It helps you to identify among those that have similar types who might have an out-of-preference characteristic, they may have developed skill in a particular area, who can you call upon to bring into a situation when you need to look at balancing out the culture. So as a, as a team building experience, it's a great way to really shed light on the uniqueness and see where we can balance each other out as team members and colleagues and shine with our natural preferences. And thank you, Dave, for the question. Great. Thanks, Sherry. So um, Celine had a question, um, which I think I can answer. Um, she's curious if FIRO B requires certification for use. And uh, with FIRO B, it is um, an instrument that you need to be educationally eligible um, or you know have that advanced degree. Um, we are working on a certification program here at CPP, which will be available um, in the fourth quarter of 2011. And until that time, um, if you are uh, certified on the MBTI, you would be able to purchase the, um, the FIRO B assessments. Um, but if you just sit tight for a few months, um, you'll be able to sign up for um, FIRO certification program coming uh, in, in the fourth quarter. 
And then Joyce had a question. Um, sure, I'm, I think I can probably answer this one too. Joyce, you were asking if um, basically does to administer uh, the, the MBTI and FIRO-B leadership report, is it necessary to buy two reports? And essentially what you want to do is you want to buy the leadership report using the MBTI and FIRO-B instruments, and then you also need to uh, purchase an administration for the MBTI. So it's one report, but it's essentially two administrations. And that enables them to take the FIRO-B assessment and to take the MBTI assessment. Okay, so um, I have another question that has come in from Carol. She is interested. So can, can you, Sherry, talk about how, how might you use these assessments to build trust, more trusting relationships between leaders and their employees? Can, can they be used for that? that? That's actually a great question. The, the idea of having a common language helps people to really talk on the same page. If someone, think of going to a foreign country, and if you do not know their language, you might actually be speaking the same word in your own language. But if you can't understand each other, then it's hard to trust what the other person is telling you. And the MBTI, the FIRO B, these tools give you that foundation of a common language. So when you talk about extroversion or introversion or gathering information through sensing or gathering information through intuition, making decisions based on feeling, making decisions based on thinking, you're all speaking the same language and it enables you to understand, while wow, that might be my preference or that might not be my preference, then I can learn to appreciate what your particular talents are. I learn to leverage my natural strengths, but I also learn to appreciate what's outside of my comfort zone so that I can call upon my colleagues and trust that they have these skills and abilities that might be natural for them that can complement my skills. So by recognizing our starting point, recognizing our blind spots, helps us to trust that someone even though they may be different, has very valuable talent, and I can trust that I need to call on that person in the situation that would help them to leverage that. So that foundation of having a common language is a great way to start building that trust. Thank you, Carol. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much, Sherry. So um, it, we've actually run out of time. Um, so we've come to the end of the webinar. Um, thank you so much for all of your excellent questions. I wanted to ta thank everyone also for taking time out of your busy day to attend. Um, Sherry, I'd also like to thank you for sharing your knowledge and expertise with us today. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> so today's presentation was part of CPP's 2011 webinar series featuring webinars on organizational development, thought leadership, and then a follow-up putting it in action webinar featuring actionable information and tips. Our next one is scheduled again for April 26th, and it's going to focus on managing conflict and stress. So to register, look for an email invitation in your inbox, or visit the webinar section of ctp.com in the next couple of weeks. I hope you'll all join us again, and thank you all so much for attending.